in this video we're going to look at a few problems that are similar to problems that are on this um, homework from sections 4.1 to 4.4 involving fractions. And the first one is to reduce this fraction. And if you read the introduction to the lesson, I told you that you can reduce by prime factoring the numerator and the denominator, or you can look for common factors and reduce by dividing both numerator and denominator by those common factors. So in this case, we're going to think about prime factoring each one. And when you prime factor a number, you write it as a product of prime numbers. So you start with something you know. We know that 63 is 7 times 9. But 9 is not a prime number because it's equal to 3 times 3. It can be factored again. So we write that as 7 times 3 times 3. And now 63 is prime factored because... 3 and 7 are both prime numbers. There's nothing we can do to break that down any further. 125, if we think about 25 times 5, that's 125. 25, we know we can break down further into 5 times 5. So it's 5 times 5 times 5. Now remember when you're done, you should be able to Take your calculator and multiply these three numbers back together and get 63. When you multiply the fives together, you should get 125. Okay, we haven't changed anything. We haven't reduced anything yet. We're just writing the numerator and the denominator as a product of prime factors. Now, to reduce it, we're looking for things they have in common. Is there a 7 in the numerator and the denominator? No. A 3 in the numerator and the denominator? No. A 5 in both? No. So there's nothing we can do. So this was already in reduced form or simplified form. So the answer is 63 over 125. That can't be simplified any further. Okay, in this problem we are again simplifying or reducing this fraction. Now we have variables, two powers, in the fraction, in both the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to write it as a product of factors again. Before you do that, before you go writing out everything, the first thing I want you to do is look at what you've got. This is c to the fourth divided by c to the fourth. Those two are exactly the same. Okay? The same variable to the same exact power. When they are identical like that, you can think about that as being the same as when I have 6 divided by 6, or 8 divided by 8. In this case, it's c to the 4th divided by c to the 4th. They're the same. All of these fractions are equal to 1. Okay, so when I have something divided by itself, it's 1. I can think of that in terms of canceling out. c to the 4th divided by c to the 4th gives me 1. I don't have to write that 1 unless it's the only thing left in the numerator or the denominator. Okay, I also have b to the third power divided by b to the third power. Again, exactly the same. So they give me 1. It's division. The fraction bar always represents division. Now I look at what I have left and I say, okay, I have 20. I can write 20 as 2 times 2 times 5 because that's 4 times 5 and 4 is equal to 2 times 2. a to the fourth I'm going to write times a times a times a times a, because that's what the fourth power means. In the denominator, I've got 12. I know that's 2 times 6, or 2 times 2 times 3. I have a to the first power. When I don't have an exponent, it's just a to the first power. We don't write that one, and that's multiplication. So now I have my numerator and my denominator written as products of factors. I can look for things that are in common. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1. Those cancel out. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1. Again, cancels out. 5 left on top. 3 left on the bottom. A divided by A cancels out. I have A times A times A left on the top. So that's A to the third power. That's my answer, that's simplified form. I've All right. Also in this section we did multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction of fractions. 
In this case, it's multiplication. The rule is I multiply the numerators together, I multiply the denominators together. My sign rules haven't changed, so I know that a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive result. I don't have to write that plus, but you can go ahead and write it just so you think about the sign before you start. And that way, if it's a negative, you don't forget to write that down. 5 times 7 is 35. 6 times 11 is 66. I think about do, five, do 35 and 66 have any common factors? And the answer is no, they don't. 66 I can write as 6 times 11. 35 is 5 times 7, but there's nothing in common there. So my answer is 35 over 66. And again, that's positive because a negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, also in this section we do division. If we have division, we leave the first fraction alone. We change the division sign to a multiplication sign, and then we invert or flip over the fraction that we're dividing by. Now in this case, we're dividing by a whole number 4. The only denominator we can give that is the number 1, because 4 divided by 1 gives me 4. So I think about what I just said. We leave the first fraction alone. We change division to multiplication, and we invert or flip over the second fraction. So I have negative 12 over 13 times 1 over 4. Now, you can simplify first, or you can multiply and then simplify later. So I'm just going to multiply and say negative 12 times 1 gives me negative 12. 13 times 4 gives me 52. I'm not done because I can tell by looking at those that they're both even numbers. And anytime I have an even number on top and on the bottom, I know I can take out a factor of 2. So I'm going to write this as negative 12. And instead of prime factoring, this time I'm going to show you how to just divide by common factors. You just divide the top and the bottom both by 2. And I get negative 6 over 13. No, I'm sorry, negative 6 over 26. Now I can do the same thing again. They're both even. Divided by 2, divided by 2, and I get negative 3 over 13. And that's my answer. Okay, another type of problem you may see on this is one where you're finding the area of a rectangular tray or a picture or some rectangle, and it gives you the measurements, and the measurements involve fractions. So think about area of a rectangle. We know that's length times width. In this case, I'm given the measurements. They're in feet. So my area is going to be 1 fourth times 4 thirds. Both measurements were in feet. I didn't have to do any conversion. All right, now, again, we can simplify first or multiply across. If you simplify, just think about you're taking common factors out of the numerator and the denominator. So in this case, if I just extend my line across here, because I know when I multiply, I'm multiplying the 1 times the 4, the 4 times the 3. So if I kind of just stretch that line out and think, okay, everything that's on the top could cancel out with something that's on the bottom. So it's 4 and 4, 1 in the numerator, 1 in the denominator. 4 divided by 4 gives me 1. The only thing that I have left on top is a 1. Remember, these leave factors of 1 because we're dividing. 4 divided by 4 gives me 1. 1 times 3 gives me 3. So my answer is 1 third its area, so it's square feet. Now let's take just a minute and look at what happens if we didn't do that canceling first, because I don't want to confuse you. If we had 1 fourth times thirds, and we just multiply it across, we would get 1 times 4 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. We would do the same thing that we did on the last one. There are two even values, so we're going to divide by 2, and we're going to get 2 over 6. They're both still even. We're going to divide by 2 again and get 1 over 3. The unit is square feet. So it works either way. 
All right, also in this section we do addition. When we add fractions, that's very different from multiplication and division, we have to have a common denominator. So if I look at these, I have a denominator of 5 and a denominator of 15. That's not the same. So I have to make one of those equal the other, or I change them both to something that is a common uh, multiple of the denominator. In this case, I know that 5 goes into 15 three times. So if I multiply this fraction on top and bottom by 3, that would give me a denominator of 15. I can do that because as long as I multiply the top and the bottom by 3, I'm only multiplying by a factor of 1 and I'm not changing the value. We could turn right around and reduce it back down to what we had. Negative 3 times 3 gives me negative 9. 5 times 3 is 15. Plus negative 1 15th. Now the denominators are the same. I keep the denominator. I add the numerators. Negative 9 plus negative 1 gives me negative 10. I don't leave it in that form because it's not simplified. I think about the fact that 10 and 15 are both divisible by 5. So I divide the top and the bottom by 5. I can go ahead and write my sign because I know a negative divided by a positive gives me a negative. I can put it on the top or out in front but I don't want to forget about it. I've got to keep it as a negative value. 10 divided by 5 gives me 2. Five divided, 15 divided by 5 gives me 3. So my answer is negative 2 thirds. Also in this section we do some subtraction. Subtraction is like addition. You must have a common denominator to subtract. Again, on this one I have 5 and 10 and I know that I could multiply 5 by 2 to give it a denominator of 10. Okay. If I do that on the bottom to change the denominator, I have to multiply the top by the same thing. Or I've changed the value of my fraction. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 2 is 10. So I get 4 tenths minus 1 tenth. I keep the denominator of 10. I subtract 4 minus 1 gives me 3. They don't have anything in common. I can't factor that and cancel out any common factors. So that's my answer. All right, let's look at one more subtraction problem. And this one is one that sometimes causes people confusion. The denominator is x, and the other denominator is 9. I still have to have a common denominator. Okay. I can't multiply x anything to make it 9, and I can't multiply 9 by anything to make it x. So I'm going to have to multiply this one by 9, the x by 9, and the 9 by x. And my common denominator will be the product of the two, 9x. Now, here's where you got to get confused. Think about what you're multiplying the denominator by. Multiply the fraction by the same thing on the top and the bottom. Write it out so you actually see it, that I've multiplied the first fraction by 9 over 9. I've multiplied the section, second fraction by x over x. So I get 4 times 9, which is 36 over 9x minus 2 times x is 2x over 9x. They have the same denominator, so I can say, okay, that's over 9x, 36 minus 2x. Now that's all I can do. Don't get confused and start trying to cancel an x because I can't do that. If I wanted to reduce it down, I'd have to split it back up into two fractions with that denominator and then do my canceling. But we were combining it, so we're done when we get to this point.